So going over um, swing trading versus day trading, kind of the mentality behind it, uh, when to enter each trades because they are different. Um, the first one I'm going to go over, number one, is NVIDIA. Uh, this is a swing trade that, uh, you know, I was in and just the importance of sticking to your technical analysis and, uh, you know, letting it play out instead of acting emotionally or um, being afraid that you're going to be losing too much money. So number one, you need to make sure that you're trading with the correct amount. <clears throat> if you're trading with too much money, you're going to make irrational decisions and you will end up losing more. Uh, if you trade with money that you really don't care about, then you can focus solely on the trading aspect of it and have your, your thoughts completely separated from the actual money itself, which is very important. So uh, when entering swing trades, you really want to enter kind of uh, towards the end of the day. Let's pull up a... Yeah, so you want to enter towards the end of the day on swing trades because, you know, a lot of the times it pops up at open, which is um, here. This is the this is today's open. Pops up huge, you know, falls down. So like that would have been a solid entry. Popped up and then, um, <clears throat> you know, ended today at a low of, uh, you know, it was down at 7.09, 7.11 here. So really in this last hour is where you want to start taking your swing entries. Um, just so you have all of the data from today to support the candle going into tomorrow. Um, you could enter over here thinking, okay, well, it's just going to continue, sorry, right here. It's going to continue shooting up and you actually bought at the day's high. So you really want to take your entries towards the end of the day and then hold them. And you need to remember the reason you're taking the trade. So I actually entered on this candle here and... Um, so let me mark that. So I entered on this candle here and uh, the following day I exited. I, I entered here because it was a bull flag. Uh, it's an Elliott wave, so this should be the fifth wave. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, and then continuing up from here would be five. Um, I did exit here because we opened at 687. So I entered around 700. And uh, it was actually 698, exited at 686 with a loss. It was like a 50% loss. <clears throat> I hadn't scaled in fully, so I didn't lose too much money. It just was a, uh, a poor entry. And then, uh, what do you know, the rest of that day it went up. And then the following day it went up to 717. Yesterday it hit 721. And then today it's just uh, kind of testing this breakout. So you really need to trust your TA and... Um, Make sure that you are separating the the money from kind of the the trading aspect. I mean, realistically, even if this had closed as a red day, this is still a perfect bull flag. It doesn't need to be only these two candles. It could have easily had a third. It could have easily had a fourth before continuing up. And that still would have been valid. It was only invalid if it dropped beneath this candle here, 683, or this 675 number. Um, so, you know, really... It never fell beneath the points that I was worried about it falling through, if that makes sense. So this was a completely normal trade. You need to just kind of trust in yourself when swing trading and not worry so much about um, the, the short-term movements. Um, now, when it comes to actually day trading, uh, <clears throat> that's a little bit different. Typically, I would suggest waiting for at least an hour after the market opens to be taking trades. But... With how it's been um, recently, it's been super volatile in the mornings and then very flat the rest of the day. So you kind of have to take advantage of that morning open. But um, again, this would be a solid day trade here on NVIDIA. You have this Fibonacci here at 7.12.50. It opened, so you know, uh, you know it already has given itself that range. So you have a 7.19, 7.20 range, and it opened at 7.11. So you have this massive $10 moving range to set up the day, which is awesome. That means it doesn't really have, um, it doesn't have to break through barriers. It hasn't already broken through and it lets it move a little bit more freely for the rest of the day. So after that, it sold off and it came down here and it tested this, Fib this Fibonacci at 7.12.50 and it bounced off of that, which is a solid sign because if you look at these, um, they, they're all bouncing kind of, there's one wick here and there's one wick here. 
but it's this following handle <clears throat> that engulfs it completely. So this is a bullish engulfing off of the Fibonacci, which is extremely strong. Um, and then from there, it just continues up. So you could have ridden that from 712. Uh, I mean, realistically, you would have entered up here at 714 up to 718. So that is a four and a half dollar move that uh, you would have made. And on a, you know, a 30 delta, um, that would have been a solid, you know, 120, 150 dollars uh, per contract. And then uh, when it comes to selling, you want to take a look at look at all these candles here, the size of them, and then look at this one. That's massive. And then you have a tweezer top up here. And that's actually what's being marked right here. Uh, that's this blue box. So you have a tweezer top, exit on this doji candle, and let it fall through. So um, day trading, you really need to have, have um, an estimate as to what the stock is going to be doing and let it play out. Um, and if it does not, if it starts to, to not play out, you need to cut your losses immediately. It's not like swing trading where you have a much broader set of TA. You need to be very diligent about it. So, um, where is Tesla's open? It is here. So this is Tesla's open. And, um, I actually, Hmm. What time frame was this on? Okay. So it was actually, uh, I think it was on the two minute, which is not good. Um, so right here, uh, Tesla had tested this, this support level here, and then it tested it again over here. And so I entered puts on this break right here. And then the puts went back to retest and then it shot up from 612 up to 614. I exited and because this was a day trade and then it continued to just go all the way down and it went down to 598 um, these calls actually went 85 percent um, I sold with it was actually a three percent gain so I believe I, I exited on this retest up here um, it was a three percent gain but I'm just showing like you need to let your your TA follow through um, because this is a two minute candle and it closed above here and then immediately started going down on the, the next two minute candles, give it some time. Realistically, you shouldn't be making decisions based on anything less than a five minute candle. And you can see here this five minute candle closed, but then the next one opened much lower than this wick and it just continued down. So you gotta give it time, you have to trust yourself, you have to trust the TA. And uh, that's really the, the main thing uh, that needs to happen when you are uh, day trading. And so, <clears throat> With, with day trading, you know, you need to, again, make sure you're using the correct amount. I use a little bit more when um, day trading versus swing trading. Uh, and take advantage of the pullbacks. You know, if you're averaging, if you want to average down somewhere, say you enter it up here, and this is a support level, don't average down here just because you think that it might be reversing at this little V. You want to wait for a support level here. So once you hit that support, average down, boom, take advantage of this, scale back out. And then you can wait again. Um, it falls right through this support level, so you know to exit your position, and uh, you know switch sides and go to go for puts. So it really just comes down to making sure that you have the correct TA and uh, trusting in it. Separate yourself completely from the the money aspect of it. It's something that we all kind of get caught up in and, and make mistakes with. So uh, that's when it comes to swing trading. Really, the uh, the most important thing. And uh, with day trading, making sure that you're cutting losses properly. But uh, <clears throat> with swing trading, you really want to make sure that you're, um, you know, adding adding at the correct areas on dips, adding at support levels, and uh, just making sure that you're letting your TA play out and not getting irrational and cutting too soon. Um, because that's just going to ultimately have you losing more money. Uh, this is... Another swing trade that we're in, um, this is XOM, and we entered this today. But you can see here, this was, actually, let me get rid of these. I let this wedge break out, and we entered up here. And even though this, you were, or I was, at a little bit of a loss right here, because I took my entry um, back here, was a, at a little bit of a loss, but it actually never broke my, my TA. So right here was my support level, and uh, it was 
oh, maybe it was this one because it was 63.90 was my support level. So it never fell down from the support level. So yes, I was at a loss, but because it never broke my TA, I held on to it and ended up getting 40% profits from it. So it's really important to, to map out your TA, your, your charts, and just make sure that you follow them no matter what.